blessings. May the Spirit of God Almighty, the Holy One of Israel, the God of peace, the King of kings, Lord of lords, give you ears to hear. May he grant you everlasting life when you place your hope in him, when you just give up all that you have and find him, seek him. May the Spirit of God make you humble. Will you humble yourself for the Lord of glory? I am Brother Joseph Herbert. I want to get on here and, and talk about your life, your life, your life, your life. Embracing Jesus. How do you do that? Recognize who he is. Believe in who he is. Who is Jesus Christ to you? You, you set your affections on him. How can you... Accept, how can I set my affections on my emotions and desires on someone who don't, I don't know? Well, you have to examine your life. Your life is created for a purpose. You are created for a purpose. You are created for the glory of God in Christ Jesus. You are made in God's image and his likeness. And your purpose in life is to serve the creator, serve his only begotten son, Served by his spirit and your works done in truth, God will, will prosper you. He will prosper you. He'll bless you beyond measure, beyond your comprehension. And he has no limitations of what he can do. So <clears throat> I've been meditating on the word and so many things that stood out. You know, I get my daily bread. I feed on the word. You as, and I'm speaking to those who are going to spend forever with God, you as a believer in Christ, you are to feed on the word. That's your daily bread. And that is what I tell people who I maybe evangelize to or encounter or minister to, even on this platform, even on anywhere God leads me, you are those who are going to spend forever with God every day, you meditate on it day and night. Notice that day-to-day -day utter speech. What is God speaking to you? What, he, what has he spoke to you today? What is the night that God gives, reveals knowledge to you? What has it spoken so that you can reflect and grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ in God? And that's his glory. It is for his glory. Your life is purposeful for the glory of God. Without purpose in Christ, your life is vain. Your life is unprofitable. No matter how much money you may have, you can be one of the richest people on the face of this planet. You can be, you can have some type of gain or some type of status or charisma, if your life is not fixed on Jesus, if your heart is not directed to Christ Jesus, if your mind is not fixed on his will and committing to him, your life is vanity and grasping for the wind. And the preacher Solomon explained that in, in Ecclesiastes. He explained in pretty much, I'm not trying to summarize it, but Pretty much, he had everything that man can desire because he was the richest that ever lived. He was the wisest, besides, besides Jesus, but way before Jesus, he was the wisest that ever lived. He knew things. The Word of God says he studied trees and cedar trees. He studied the, the ants and the insects. That's why you have the book of Proverbs. And everything that Man's heart can desire. It was all vanity and vexation of spirit. So one of the things is I talked about before about trusting in the Lord as if you would trust a parachute, as if you would trust your life or your cares in a person who you love in his hands or her hands. Your faith in God matters. So one of the things is how sensitive are you to the voice of God? One, one example, and I have a testimony to this. So yesterday, 
I'm at work and at work, I'm praying in my most holy faith. I'm praying in the spirit and I'm communicating with God as I work because this is how you have to be. This is how you have to be in this world. This world is cursed. You, you have, you're going to encounter ungodly people. You're going to have people that's going to use profanity and blaspheme God's name and you know have ungodly conversations. But you are to stay focused. And that's what I've been doing. So I work in a warehouse. And I was uh, praying to the Lord. Lord, I, I'm just, and in my mind, I was like, Lord, I want to be more sensitive to your voice. I want to, I want you to speak to me directly. And so within 30 minutes, because um, I work in a, in a warehouse at a dock receiving things, we get many deliveries, uh, deliverers. And when I asked that, I want to, Lord, I want to hear you, your voice. I want you to speak directly to me. And the delivery came. The delivery guy came by. I opened the door, looked at this name tape, uh, name tape, and it said, "It's I'm gonna spell it. It said L O R D." It said Lord. I'm like, and I, I got excited, and I know I didn't even know the guy. I was, I was like, oh man, I'm just praying to the Lord about. Again, he he was looking like. Surprise! I like I'm praying. I was just praying to the Lord that I that you would speak to me, and and like that. What what's going on with your name? You, your name is Lord. He was like, Nah, man. They misspelled my name. That my real name is Lloyd. And I'm like, okay. So I did. I I picked up his stuff and put it where it belonged. But when he left, again, the Lord speaks in many different ways. He he um he was very humble guy. He left and said he told me keep walking by faith, and I said and not by sight. So that's the word of the Lord. The Lord spoke and answered the prayer. So He can answer you. He can if you're faithful and obedient. If you are seeking Him diligently, I love the way Zephaniah says in chapter two. Let me go there real fast because I want to come back to Psalm thirty-seven. But you you. You have, if you are a child of God, a man of God, a king and a priest, God, and, and you are humble, you are to be meek. Jesus says, blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. So Zephaniah says something like this too as well, which is very encouraging. As I turn there, give me one second. It is right here. Zephaniah chapter two, verse three says this, seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, meaning which have performed his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So God is, if you are faithful and obedient, God is your protector. He is your refuge and your fortress, as said in Psalm 91. You declare that. You are my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I will put my trust. So you, your relationship with God is to be deep. And Jesus says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you by this or henceforth, my father is glorified that you'll bear much fruit so that you will be my disciple. So if you are a son of God, are you a disciple? What is a disciple, brother Joseph? A disciple of Christ is one who is disciplined to learn of Jesus. What does it mean to learn? It means to have, to study, to gain the knowledge thereof or whatsoever you are wanting to feed on. That's what it means to learn. So the encouragement in Zephaniah, which is, I'm going to read it again in chapter 2, verse 3. It says, seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth. What does it mean to be meek? It means to be humble. It means, and humble and meek are the same thing pretty much, but to have a modest behavior, willing to submit under authority, 
willing to submit under leadership and you receive instructions. You receive instructions and then you obey them. Jesus Christ says, blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. The meek are those who are slow to anger, those who are swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Because they know that the wrath of man does not work or produce the righteousness of God. We, and Psalm 37 says the same thing too as well, in a sense. It, it, it's regarding anger, regarding obedience, and regarding the meek of the earth. But this is a commandment by the word of God. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, which have performed or wrought his judgment. Perform his judgment. Seek righteousness. The word of God says in Hebrews, seek the, let me see, how's it go? He is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. So that means if you strongly put all your effort to seek the Lord, when you wake up, you don't waver, you don't be indecisive. I know it can be, I know it's easier said than done, but you seek the Lord to, you, you gotta, your heart has to be desirous of his presence. When you seek the Lord in the morning and you are in his presence, you are desired. To, he must be your first love, pretty much. He must be prioritized. He must be number one priority in your life. When you seek him early, early will I seek you. That's a, that's a psalm somewhere. Um, I believe that's Psalms 5. Yes, it's Psalms 5. So yeah, you seek the Lord early. He will bless you throughout the rest of the day. Pray without ceasing. That, that means to always communicate with God, whether it's in your most holy faith, meaning the the gift of tongues, or in your natural language when you communicate with God because he hears the prayers of the righteous. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, not your own righteousness. Now, to the unconverted, to those who are unsure of their destination, after they die, nobody knows when they're going to die. Nobody knows when they're going to breathe their last breath. You, you have people that, that proclaim their own righteousness. And the word of God says to uh, lean not to your own understanding. Be not wise in your own eyes. Lean not to your own understanding. That is an example of one who is self-righteous or think they're righteous. It's also known as arrogance or conceit. So Jesus Christ is perfect. And he said, when we follow him, he says, be perfect for my father in heaven is perfect. That's a commandment by God. Those words are written in red. So one of the things is in this life, you are created for a purpose and I say that to encourage. I say that to exhort so that you can find God in Christ. I want, I want, not everyone's going to be saved. Not everyone, not everyone is going to be born again. But one thing is that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, he said, enter in through the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way. That leads to destruction and many go in thereat because straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life and few that be that find it. So what Jesus is talking about, straight is the gate, he is the gate. John chapter 10 says he is the, he said he is the door and they come in and find pasture. So when you recognize the point of your life. Now, again, I'm speaking to those who are unsure of their lives, where they're going after they die. Jesus Christ is available. When, if you're hearing this message, if you are you having doubts in your mind, if you are unsure about where you're going to spend eternity at, I'm telling you, Jesus Christ, the Lord, God manifested in the flesh, is available. You cleave to him. You cleave and be nourished in his word. 
Be nourished in his presence. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon his name while he is near. He's near. Understand, Jesus Christ desires you so that you can be redeemed by his innocent blood, by his life that was given for ransom. And he yields up the ghost and goes into the belly of the earth. He said it is finished. Rises again on the third day and reveals himself to his disciples and even the disciples that did not believe to a point, but he upbraided them and he ascends back into heaven. He is now seated at the right hand of the father. Understand Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father, but by me. So. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Uh, I, I like the way the prophet Daniel, when he was, in, he was interpreting King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, the second dream that he had. And towards his interpretation of the dream, he tells King Nebuchadnezzar that let my, he said, let my counsel be acceptable to you that you break off your sins with by righteousness and your iniquity by showing mercy to the poor that it may be a lengthening of your tranquility. Meaning, King Nebuchadnezzar was very, he was lifted up in pride. His heart was hardened, the word of God says. And one of the things is, one of the examples is that he built a statue of himself. He, whoever he set up, he put down. Whoever he slew, he slew. Whoever he, he, whoever he kept alive, he kept alive. The Lord used him to judge Jerusalem and Judah when they was in their idolatry and when they was in sin, and they raised up. He raised up the king of Babylon to judge. Judah and Jerusalem. And so King Nebuchadnezzar was in pride, but the Lord sends the prophet Daniel to interpret this dream. Now, what I'm, what's my point is? My point is pride goes before destruction. And that's what the word of God says. But the Lord also, it says in um, 1 Peter that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So the meek will inherit the earth. You seek meekness. And we have the word of the very word of God of examples of those who were meek. Moses was known as the meekest that ever lived. It says that in the word of God. Meek, meaning you again, that means that you are humble and you are modest in your behavior. You are not quick tempered. And then so in uh, Psalm 37 says this. I'm gonna read this now. It's very encouraging. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read to verse nine. So verse one, me it, it starts off. It says, "Fret not yourself, meaning do not worry yourself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity." And it says, "For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green tree." Meaning the Lord is gonna judge the wicked. The evildoers, those who are envious, those who are envious, those who are promoting or provoking envy. And it says to trust in the Lord. There's the faith. There's the answer to your uh, your wonder and where you're going to spend forever at. And your faith is in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good. And you have to understand man's definition of good is not the right good in the eyes of God because our good works, our righteousness are as filthy rags until you commit to Jesus Christ. So shall you dwell in the land and verily you shall be fed. And it says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. What desires? The desires to please the Father through Jesus Christ. Man, yes, this is Old Testament, but Seeking him where he is found. De your desires of pleasing and committing your life to God. And 
There are many examples of that. And it says in the word commit, the next verse, commit your way to the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Meaning, and Jesus says this in John uh, chapter 3. He who does truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been wrought or performed in God. So, likewise for this verse right here in, th in verse th 6, uh, chapter 7 of Psalms, and he shall bring forth your righteousness. When you commit your way to the Lord and trust in him, your faith is in him, solidified in him, and he shall bring it to pass, bring your, your old nature to pass, your, 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 your dead works to pass. It's, and this is prophetic to the New Testament because the word of God says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have been passed away. Behold, all things become new. And it says he will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. What, why the noonday? Because, you know, 12 o'clock noon is the hottest. If it's summertime, it's the hottest of the day. Depending on where part of the world you are in. If you're in Kuwait, and I've been there before, Kuwait is, is it gets to uh, 100, believe it or not, 121 degrees. When the wind blows, it burns your skin. That's how hot it is there. Kuwait. So 12 o'clock noon there is very, very hot. Very, very hot indeed. So it says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Meaning we don't, we don't be like the wicked. We don't be like those who, who you know, when I used to watch, when I was in the world, I used to watch bad things and wanted to be like the bad guy that are getting all the women and all the money and all the merchandise and all the things that is, that is, that means nothing in this life because the true riches are found in Jesus. It says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Fret not yourself, it means do not worry or take any thought of those who are prospering in their wickedness. We don't follow them. We follow the Lord. Now, again, this is, in verse 8, is very, this is like a cross-reference between uh, James chapter 1, I forget which verse, but um, I'm, I'm going ahead and quote it. It says, be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger before the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God, meaning it does not produce the righteousness of God. You being quick tempered and you act on it, it does not produce God's righteousness because God is slow to anger. Jesus is slow to anger. He didn't point out Judas Iscariot to the disciples. That's the devil right there. He's the thief. He's been taking all the money. No, he, he was slow to anger. The Lord knew what he was doing. The Lord did not say anything about what he was doing. He says, one of you is a devil. They all wonder who it was. Is it I, Lord? Is it I, Lord? He didn't, he didn't, tell, he didn't reveal who that was. Until so after the uh, the third time when he wakes his disciples and says um, in the from the garden of Gethsemane when he sees the Father, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours. And then he goes to his disciples and finds them sleeping the third time. The third time he says, "Sleep on now, for your betrayer is at hand." And they find out it's Judas Iscariot. And they all, I, I can imagine their faces. So they found out who it was because it wasn't the time. Jesus Christ is slow to anger. Yes, I'm pretty sure someone who is a thief will anger you because they're a thief. The devil is a thief. That's why the devil entered into Judas Iscariot's heart because that's one of his components 
of his curse journey to the lake of fire. Yes, because Jesus said it. The thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. One of the components of stealing is a thief. Judas Iscariot was a thief. So yes, it will. That's why you no. Know, even in the world, the world hates thieves. The world wants to get back and be revengeful. And, and I'm pretty sure the for sons of God that when someone steals, we are not to be vengeful. We are not to get back and uh, and come uh, come at the person who whosoever with anger. We respond. With the Lord and what His purpose is, we acknowledge God in all our ways. We don't, we don't. Jesus says, uh, "No." Matter of fact, John the Baptist says, "I'm trying to remember." Relying on the Holy Ghost, um, whoever takes your cloak. No, Jesus said that. John John the Baptist says something similar too, as well. But one of the things is, like I said, this is a cross reference between James chapter one and Psalm thirty-seven verse eight. It says, "Cease from anger." And it says, forsake and forsake wrath. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Meaning stop being angry and turn from wrath. And it says, fret not yourself in any wise to do evil. Meaning don't react to wrath or anger. Acknowledge God. They don't say acknowledge God in this verse, but this is what sons of God do. We put it into the anger. We are slow to anger. We have, by the Spirit of God, temperance which is self-control. And it says, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they will inhabit the earth. Sounds like the meek. It sounds like the meek. Zephaniah, again, chapter 2, Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. That's what it said. We are to seek meekness in Jesus. And you, find, you will find that it is in his presence. You will find that in worship. He washes you when you worship him. He washes you when you meditate on his word. He washes you when you delight yourself in him. He will give you the desires of your heart because your desires of your heart are for God and for the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the coming of the just one. He is the express image of the Father's person. He is the brightness of the Father's glory. And guess what? How control is the Lord? He upholds everything by the word of his power. So know that he is coming back at an hour no one expects. Behold, he comes in the clouds. Guess what? Every eye will indeed see him, even they that pierced him. All kindreds of the earth will well because of him, even so. Amen. Let that sink in your mind. Let that sink in your heart to know the Lord and trust in him. You need to embrace Jesus. I seen a, I remember a, I, I, I don't follow everybody, even I have certain family members that I don't I don't follow because they don't serve the Lord. They're not uh, focused or, or serious as I am about Jesus Christ. But one of the things is that they see my videos, they like my videos, and they may amen it or whatever, you know. But when you stand before God who is holy, who is just and righteous... And he judges you. He, he, he judges your thoughts. Every thought that you have thought of without your repentance that you may did not that you did not do, your heart's desires, your heart's desires may be unrighteous, and your life that you did not fully commit to the Lord, how will you stand? Please tell me. Nahum chapter one says something similar. Let me turn it real fast. Nahum chapter one. It says this now again and the last time I did this uh, Facebook has when you when you when you see your video in the story it will show maybe the maybe certain parts of your video but the last time I did this um because I'm gonna show you that brother Joseph did not write the Bible this is the very word of God the written word of God now you see the book of Nahum I'm about to read 
truth to you so that you can be fully aware that you need Jesus that you need to embrace. How will you stand on the day of judgment when you stand before God? Will you be a sheep or will you be a goat? How will you stand before his holy indignation? Now listen to this. And verse 3, I'm going to start in verse 3. Matter of fact, verse 2, it says this. God is jealous. Now why is he jealous? Because he loves you. He doesn't want you to serve other gods. He doesn't want your heart to turn to things that turns your heart from God. It says, God is jealous and the Lord revenges. It says it twice. The Lord revenges, the Lord revenges, and his furious, and his furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. And he reserves wrath for his enemies. Now listen closely. Remember, I was talking about being slow to anger. If you're quick tempered, that's not, it doesn't produce the righteousness of God because God is slow to anger. And it says it right here, verse 3 in, of Nahum. And again, to prove you that Brother Joseph does not, does not lie. This is the written word of God. It says this. I'm going to point this out. I'm going to show this in the video. Maybe the video story will show the same thing. It says, the Lord is slow to anger. The Lord is slow to anger. It says it right there in verse 3. The Lord is slow to anger, meaning there's when you are living this life, you know that that God exists. Even atheists know that God exists. They just don't admit it. They just are they're angry with God because their lives are they're in confusion. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. It says this. And will not at all acquit the wicked, meaning he will not show any show the mercy. He will not show mercy to the wicked, those who are not not committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says the Lord has His way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of His feet. It, and it says He rebukes the sea and makes it dry. Sounds like the children of Israel when it was crossing through the Jordan River through the Red Sea. And it says, and dries up all the rivers, Bashan languishes, and Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon languishes. It says, the mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burnt at his presence. Yes, the world and all that dwell therein. Who? Now listen to this. Here's the question. Here's the question. One day, speaking to those who have ears to hear that are unsure about their life, that needs to examine themselves. This is the question then that stands out in verse 6 of Nahum chapter 1. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can stand before God in his wrath? Who will stand when he judges you and you'll be found guilty before a God who is holy? How will you stand? Would you sneak up on a lion. Matter of fact, would you sneak in a den of lions that are sleeping and you, you kick one and decide to run? Of course you wouldn't because that would be crazy, right? But i tell you this, it'd be better if you did than to stand before a God who is holy because it says in Hebrews I believe it's chapter 9. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. That's what it says. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him. Now it says this. You, you need to know God is good. God is good. You may Even unbelievers will say that. Unbelievers will say that. And believers will say it as well because we know that God is good. It says, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows them that trust in him. He knows them that trust in him. So do you trust in God? Is your faith solidified in Christ Jesus? 
so that you will have protection. And when you stand before the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will be on his right hand. You are upright. God made man upright. You are to be upright. So God is holy. Who, what do you imagine against the Lord? What do you imagine? That's, that's verse 9. What do you imagine against the Lord? You can't. And Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar realized that when the Lord restored his reasoning and understanding because he took it, it got taken from him. Daniel puts it like this. It said, he, he said this when he was um, the interpret the writing of the wall uh, from Belshazzar. He says, when his heart was lifted up, he's talking about King Nebuchadnezzar, when his heart was lifted up, his mind hardened in pride, he was the pose of his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him, and he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven until he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of man, and he appointed whosoever he wills. So God is holy. He is sovereign. He shows mercy on whomever he shows mercy on, and he shows his wrath on whoever he shows his wrath to. He's sovereign, but he's the mercies of God are on the meek. The mercies of God, the mercies of God are on the humble. The mercies of God are those who are in Christ Jesus, who are serving him faithfully and obey him in truth, in spirit, in truth. We worship God. We seek him where he is found. Call upon his name while he is near. He is very near. So you need to embrace Jesus. The gospel, the good news, the testimony of Jesus Christ is for the meek. So will you commit to Jesus Christ, the Holy One? He, he, he is God in the flesh. He is my king, my Lord, as my shirt said, my savior, my healer, my refuge. I can't see the rest because there are comments. Not comments, but um, it says those who are watching this video. Uh, you know, but know that God is available. Jesus Christ is available. And no man can, no man cannot be born again unless... He is baptized in the water and the spirit. Jesus tells Nicodemus that except the man be born again, born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Will you receive Christ by spirit and fire and in water so that you can enter in and endure to the end because God is faithful and holy and he loves those who love him. Let me go. Let me go real fast to Proverbs chapter. Uh, I believe it's seven. It says something. It says something uh, very, very powerful when when it comes to enduring temptations, especially lust. Jesus says, "Whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with that person already in his heart." So it says this. I'm trying to find the one this one verse that leads to the um it because it get it's given wise instruction. Matter of fact, let me just read verse one. My son, it starts off in chapter seven of Proverbs. It says, My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live in my law as the apple of your eye. Doesn't that sound Similar to Jesus Christ when he said in John chapter 14, verse 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Meaning if you love the Lord, you're, he says, obey him. That's, that's, keeping the, that's keeping the commandments of God. Not the Ten Commandments, but what he commands you. It is righteous for you to seek the Lord. That's a commandment in Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 3. It says, seek the Lord, are you meek of the earth? That's a commandment. You obey that. It says, my son, keep my words and lay up 
my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live in my law as, <coughs> excuse me, and my law as the apple of your eye. Bind them up on your fingers, write them upon the table of your heart. Say unto wisdom, you are my sister and call understanding your kinswoman. So it's talking about wisdom and understanding should be so close as a deep relationship that you will call it your kinswoman and your sister. So verse five, that they may keep you from the strange woman. Now here it is. And I love the how, you know, the devil, he tempts man through anyone. He, 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 can, he knows weakness of man. That's why he tempts man. Because we're in this human flesh and this flesh is capable of sinning before God. So it says this, um, that they may keep you from the strange woman, from the stranger which flatters with the words. For at the widow of my house, I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones. I discern among the youth, a young man void of understanding passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle in heart. It's meaning she was very cunning and, and just like the devil, just like the devil, just like the devil as a serpent. He was cunning among all beasts. That's the word of God says in Genesis. She is loud and stubborn. That's what it says. She is loud and stubborn. Why stubborn? Stubborn is... A resisting to do what's right. You're resisting to do what's right, and you don't want to do right because you 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 love wickedness. Her feet abide not in her house. She now she is without now hold on, how's it say? Now is she without now in the streets and lies in wait in every corner. What's lying in wait? Meaning she's ready to put you to death by her crafty schemes. Um and so it says, so she caught him and kissed him and with an impudent face said unto him, meaning she had a, uh, like she was very, like she's honest, but she's conniving. She's deceiving just like the devil. And it says, I, it says, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I, pray, I paid my vows. Therefore, I came forth to meet you diligently to seek your face and I have found you. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry and with carved works with fine linen, linen of Egypt. Why Egypt? One of the curses that got mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 28 is because the Lord delivered the Hebrews with a mighty strong arm by, by Moses and he freed them from slavery. The Lord freed the Hebrews from slavery and hard bondage and rigor. And it, it talks about in Deuteronomy chapter 28, it talks about the blessings and the curses. One of the things I can remember is, I'm not going to go there. I don't have to turn there because there's a lot of curses that's talked about in that chapter. But one of the things is, it says, hey, when you don't hearken to the voice of the Lord, you will go, you will go back on a ship back to Egypt. And, and it says, no man will buy you. So it's describing you unprofitable. But this, this um, woman that was a harlot that caught the simple, it says it caught them. she caught him and kissed him. And when an impudent face said to him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. But it says this, I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. So, women, and I'm not saying, I'm talking about women who are not born again, uh, and men too, who, who, are, who are deceptive, that use lasciviousness and lust to the simple and turn hearts from serving God you see that what happened to Solomon in 1 Kings 11? The Solomon had 700 wives, 300 concubines. And 
women who served other gods and started burning incense to other gods and his heart was turned from God, which disobeyed the commandment because it, the Lord commanded through the law of Moses to not go into the women of not go into strange women. This is a strange woman that's being talked about right here in Proverbs chapter seven. But it says she had tapestry and carved works with fine linen of Egypt. So the devil through people who are not saved can tempt you to go back, can tempt the, 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 the born again to go back into the world. That's falling away from the faith. That's backsliding the word of God talks about in Jeremiah. That is dangerous. You need to embrace Jesus so that you can have the wisdom from his spirit when you worship him in spirit and in truth, when you meditate on his word day and night, when you draw near to him and work righteousness through Jesus by walking in the spirit and obeying him, God will protect you from the wiles of the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee. Yes. And very important to meditate on the word day and night so that you will have the bread of life in you. Uh, it says Jesus Christ, not Jesus Christ, Paul by the spirit says in Colossians, let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. Dwell in you richly. That is so you so you are ready for the adversary. When he wants to tempt you, you rebuke him with the word that is written. That's what Jesus Christ did in Matthew 5, uh, 4 and Luke chapter 4. And you rebuke them with the word of God because he is the word of God. How can you survive in this life without Jesus? How can you survive in this life without embracing Jesus Christ? You can't. There's no hope for you if you're not born again. So seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth. Seek his righteousness and his and meekness through Jesus Christ, committing your way to the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in Jesus Christ so that you can be born again. And when you commit fully and truly know that you have assurance in Christ, Jude, Christ Jesus, you endure to the end. Continue to obey the Lord with your whole heart and you will make it in. You will spend forever with God. In Jesus' name, I'm Brother Joseph Herbert and this is For His Glory.